Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. The subject of today's video is inside this box and it's a little bit tatty. I mean the the grey uh, duct tape, I've put that on just to hide a few uh, addresses and whatnot but the black duct tape is pretty much all that's holding this together and as you can see we've got a few holes in this thing from shipping so fingers crossed it's got here in one piece. So without further ado Let's get it open. Well, interesting packaging to say the least, but uh, so far so good on the survival front. Let's get this laptop case opened up and have a look at what's inside. We'll start with the little pocket at the front. Okay. Power lead, normal figure of eight lead there. Ooh, we've got someone's mouse. Microsoft Home ball mouse cereal hmm. might need a little bit of cleaning there's a perhaps a bit of discoloration on the um, on the plastic on the buttons but you know I've never actually seen one of these mouse uh, one of these mouse I've never actually seen one of these mice that's pretty sweet we've got a Freecom Traveller. This is a 24 speed CD ROM drive on PCM CIA card. Uh, looks like it has a separate DC input jack, so see if there's any power supply for that. Nice. A few marks, but looks in pretty decent nick otherwise. Nothing else in there. Let's get to the main event. Before I open it, the bag seems uh, bag seems in decent nick too. Yes. Tiny bit mucky, but if it's as old as the content, it's not doing too bad. Just the uh, the big um, carrying strap missing is all. There's nothing in there. And here we have it. This is a Toshiba Satellite 110CS laptop. Now before we get in and have a closer look, I just want to read you some of the marketing material for this, um, for this laptop because Toshiba were really blowing their trumpet about this one. It says, and I quote, Warning, this notebook has a fatal attraction. Take it from Toshiba. Imagine some totally unknown source of power pulsing from a giant screen. So bright and clear you're helpless to resist it. Weird, huh? Well, there's more because this screen is on a Toshiba Satellite 110 packed with all sorts of other fatally attractive features. I can only hope I survive long enough to film the rest of this video. Okay, so here's the laptop and first impressions are it looks in pretty good nick. There's a few marks and scrapes as is to be expected, but oh, that's not good. Something rolling around inside. We'll worry about that in a minute. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a little grimy. It wants a, you know, wants a decent wipe down, but it's not too bad. Before we get into the specs, let's just take a look around this uh, around this thing. Got nothing on the front port wise other than this little grill. Turning it to this side, we have the power on switch, which is missing. I wonder if that's um, if that's what we could hear rattling around. We've got two 
Type 2 PCMCIA slots, or use them together to make one Type 3. That appears to be a reset button, a Kensington lock, a vent, uh, ventilation grill. Looks like we've got a card in here, so if I push that, we have. Oh, look at that. Action Tech. V90 56k data link fax modem that's fantastic I hope that's coming through on the camera that's awesome uh, I haven't got the little cable that plugs in there unless it's hiding in the bottom of the laptop bag but I didn't see anything but it's a freaking modem look at that that's awesome one thing I do like about these Toshibas is the little, uh, the little switches for when they're not being used and for when something's in, you can rotate it out the way so that it's not sticking out, keeps it nice and slim. Looking at the back, we have a combined keyboard and mouse PS2 port, serial port, the power input. So noticing how that's the exact same socket to match the power in lead the power brick if you like must be built into the laptop so no external power brick just a power lead that's great would have made it a lot easier I mean yeah the laptop weighs a lot as a result but I do think it made it easier traveling around if you forgot that particularly back in the um, back in the 90s this sort of figure eight power lead, this was everywhere. I mean, things like cassette players, I seem to remember, would typically use that sort of thing. So if you lost that lead, easy to replace, you could still use your laptop. Port replicator in the middle, parallel port and VGA out. Yeah, speaking of weight, I think it's about 3.2 kilograms, this, which is, uh, is, let me have a look, see if we can get that in pounds. Turns out I do not know what that is in pounds. That's probably going to be about seven or eight pounds, isn't it? Something like that. Moving on to this side. Contrast on the screen. Floppy disk drive. What's that? Oh, and a release for the battery. Taking a look underneath. Uh, access cover, presumed for getting to the RAM. Uh, all four feet are still on, although weirdly three have gone brown and this one down here has stayed grey for some reason. No, not sure why. Um, this is the battery I'm guessing. Let's see if I can get that off. And there we go. Kicking it old school, a nickel metal hydride battery. None of your newfangled lithium technology in this. This is, I'm trying to read it on its side, 12 volts, 3,600 milliamp hour. No idea if that's got any charge, or can still hold a charge in it after all this time. I very much doubt it, but we'll have a look. Just put it down, see if we can unclip it. And there it is, the battery. Fairly weighty. Uh, looking at the size, I wouldn't be surprised to find a number of um, AA cells in here. I wonder if they can. I wonder if they still make these, or failing that. If uh, if it's easy to get in that for refreshing the battery. Underneath the battery is where you get to the hard disk. Hard disk on this is. Um, 810 megabytes, which will format down to just under 800, I would have thought. Pop the battery back in. There we go. Right, I'm going to give this a quick wipe down. Give my hands a wash. It feels a little greasy, perhaps. It's not, maybe not quite the right word. A little slicker than it should. I give it a wipe down. We'll get it plugged in and then cross his fingers. See if it powers on. Just a quick look at the top here. You can see we've got this nice old school satellite logo. Um, the 
indicator LEDs and whatnot. Presume they'll be at the bottom of the screen when this thing's folded up. Also, quick thumbs up to whoever got that power cable. I don't know if it's the original or if it's aftermarket, but it is literally 10 feet long. They did not skimp on the length of the power cable. You could practically walk around the room with this thing plugged in. That's great. Anyway, let's get this screen opened up and see what we've got. Oh, look at that. That's fun. Oh, I'm so excited. I've kicked the tripod. That's fantastic. Again, we've got this old school satellite logo at the top. I love that. Straight underneath, original Intel inside Pentium processor. And weirdly, down here at the bottom, designed for Microsoft Windows 95, which I think we've all seen that before, but I don't know if that's supposed to be a black and white sticker or if it's just been such a long time that it's just faded and lost all its colour. This was June 1996, I think, so... Ooh. Is that 25 years now? Something like that, just over 25 years. So, I don't know. I'll have to go back and have a look at some of the marketing literature, but uh, maybe that has faded. And look at this keyboard. You just don't get keyboards like this on laptops anymore. It's certainly been well used. The A and S keys are quite faded. So I've been doing a lot of gaming on this. Given the screen, I doubt that very much, but Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, again, once quick wipe down, just like the just like I did on the outside. But oh, that's for a laptop keyboard. That's that's pretty good. Less keen on the buttons. Not a lot of travel on that uh, on those mouse buttons. And we've got the little mouse joystick in the middle of the keyboard or accu point as. Toshiba called it. Yeah, that one's a bit of a clean. I'm going to get this wiped down. But just a quick note on the heft of this thing. I know I've already mentioned the weight, but it's so thick for its size. It's about 50, 55 millimeters thick, something like that. And there's just something reassuring and kind of sturdy about that heft uh, on it. Th this sort of the modern days of ultra thin and ultra light that was you know even if they could have built something like that back then that was not in the thinking for when they uh, when they designed this satellite right i give the insides a quick wipe and then we'll see if she'll power on one thing i've just found out when giving this a quick clean was that the little rubber top off the uh, mouse joystick that pulls straight off uh, I wonder if you can still get replacements for those things. Might be able to get one that's um, that's a bit less a bit less gross feeling. I think just with the sort of rubber being quite old on that, it's gone a little bit sticky, and that's obviously a bit you know quite quite grimy. I'll have to see if I can get a replacement one of those. Just before we switch on, quick rundown of the specs: 100 megahertz Intel Pentium processor in here. It's got the 8K code and 8K data cache for, for the full 16, so effectively a full-on 100 meg Intel, uh, Intel Pentium. 8 megs of RAM, that was upgradable to a maximum of 40 megs. 1 meg video uh, on a Visa Local Bus card, which was a CT65548 chipset. 810 meg hard drive, as we've already mentioned. Now this screen, for all that boasting about the screen in the original advert that I read to you, there were two models of this satellite. There was a 110 CT that had a active matrix color TFT. This is a 110 CS which uses the cheaper dual scan color passive matrix TFT. What that means is it's quite a blurry screen it's not going to update as fast i don't think something like doom ring on here is going to be particularly fluid or nice to look at but we'll see how we get on with it anyway could this, it was it is 800 by 600 resolution add up to add up to 256 colors from a palette of 
260 something thousand, I forget off the top of my head, about 260,000 colours to choose from. And it's 11.3, 11.3 inch diagonal viewable area. Right, we'll switch on at the wall. And I can't reach the on switch. I need to find something to press that with. Got a small wooden paintbrush. Wooden handle, this should be okay to poke it with. I think we have life. Yes, look at that. Bad battery, check some error. That's fine, that's to be expected. I hope it's a coin cell in here. Um, I will take that apart and have a look. I should just say actually on that, there's still plenty of literature, service manuals um, and everything online for this. It's a well-documented laptop. Okay, here we are in the BIOS. Uh, straight away, you can see this thing has been upgraded to the full 40 megabytes of RAM, so that's great. Everything else looks pretty normal. Um, EID hard drive, no password, that's good. System B, power up boot, CPU cache enabled, yep, serial port, parallel port. Okay. Straight away you can see there, just moving between these options, you can see the sort of fading, uh, the sort of fading out of this passive matrix, uh, this passive matrix screen. Um, refresh rate, I guess, was not really their friend. Or maybe they did refresh fast, but that you got that fading out as the uh, as the pixels of the uh, LCD uh, turned off or turned on, whatever you know, with whatever they were doing with them. Right, end, save changes and exit. Are you sure? Yes. Starting Windows 95, brilliant. And the custom Toshiba splash screen for it. Oh, we've got a start menu. System soft card works or no card works PC card support. Hmm. Ah, what the heck, let's have card works, see what happens. Just listening to the hard disk there, thankfully there doesn't appear to be any horrible clicking or, you know, untoward noises coming out of the hard disk. See how long it takes to boot to the, uh, boot to the desktop. Hopefully you can see that. There we are, Windows 95 desktop. Okay, I've brought the camera in for a closer look. So let's have a look what we've got installed on here. First up, um, I've rebooted the laptop and I went without the PC card support this time. And if we look in my computer, we should hopefully just have the, um, just the floppy disk and the hard disk and the CD-ROM drive showing up, which I've got plugged in. Aha, look at that. Um, it looks like we've got the active desktop, you know, the later um, Internet Explorer uh, release put here on Windows 95 that brings a lot of the Windows 98 features in, such as these larger icons and navigation bars in the, um, you know, in a lot of the windows on on the computer, in, in, in Explorer, for example, uh, you know, File Explorer rather than Internet Explorer. So... Let's just have a quick look at that. Let's see what version we're running. Oh, I don't need to start menu. It's down here on quick launch. On the right, interesting. Always liked it on the left myself. Of course it's wanting to dial a connection because of the modem and <laughs> looking at that, um, this is a connection for FreeServe. Um, the reason I went ha on that, um, FreeServe were an ISP here in the UK that I used uh, 
well, many, many years back, you know, back when we were still getting on the internet using modem. So, I, so and it's a name I've, I've not seen around for a long time. So that's a little bit of a nostalgia kick there. Um, FreeServe are one of the first ISPs in this country to offer internet access for, uh, for no fee. So just quickly for anybody who doesn't know, in the earlier days of the internet, you would pay for pay per minute uh, on your phone uh, f- you know for the for the phone call effectively that your modem was making but you would also pay your isp a yearly fee just for the pr- sort of privilege if you like of uh, oh screen service come on just for the privilege of dialing them and you know them providing you internet access but oof, i think what was it maybe 96 perhaps something like that maybe maybe a little bit after that uh, ISPs such as FreeServe started springing up who effectively paid for their own servers and whatnot with ads which meant that when you were accessing them you did not pay them a yearly fee you still paid for the call your modem was making but you didn't pay a yearly fee and when your yearly fees could run to well over £100 back at the time you know a lot of people jumped all over these uh, as a good way to save some money uh, just looking at that screen saver that is not a high frame rate. I don't know if it's meant to be a higher frame rate than that, but uh, we'll have to have a look, see if the other screen saves installed. Anyway, get back off that. So, yes, um, obviously we're not going to be dialing a connection. I'll close it out and do what we came in here to do. Um, well, it's back when companies used to customise. Um, Internet Explorer with their own little sort of busy icon at the top. I haven't seen that for a while either. And yeah, as we thought, a later version of Internet Explorer. This is Internet Explorer 5. Now let's have a look in Control Panel. Incidentally, you may be able to hear a sort of thunk noise that this laptop's making every so often. It sort of it seems to be doing it, um, um, you know, quite sort of um, uh, repeatably. It makes a thunk noise, and about a minute or two passes, and it makes another thunk noise, and so on. No idea why it's doing that. And putting my ear to it, it doesn't seem to be the same, uh, the same sort of part of the laptop where the hard drive noise is coming from so I don't know what it is but I've got my fingers crossed that this isn't the hard drive that's uh, causing the issue of course I could have just looked in here for Internet Explorer but yep yeah. Windows 95 version 4.950A and as we expect Pentium the full 40 megabytes of RAM that's fantastic let's just have a quick look in device manager and you can see we've got the card in for the Freecom Ultra, um, the Freecom Ultra PC card, I guess that's just the name of that. But yeah, for, for the Freecom uh, CD drives, I've got that plugged in. We'll try that in a minute. Um, and data wise, CD Pro adapter. I haven't seen that in the bag. I wonder if that was perhaps a, a previous one uh, that they had before. Maybe they upgraded to this one at some point. Everything else looks present and correct. The chips and tech accelerator I wonder how much accelerating it does nothing particularly uh, out of the ordinary in there that's all good now you know it sounds up there and obviously looking back in that last list this being a, a business laptop or I guess a laptop that would primarily be used for business not gaming we have no sound card in here it is PC speaker or nothing I'm sure there must have been PCMCIA sound cards that existed um, back when this laptop, uh, you know, w- w- was new. It'd be interesting to see if we could get something like that and try and get some sound out of this thing. So, a quick look in uh, display properties reveals that that screensaver called Amazon is uh, sadly the only one, uh, the only custom one, if you like, that's been installed on it. Right, got some discs. Let's see if the floppy disk drive on this thing works. Ah, oh, love me some floppy disk noises. Hmm, 
A is not accessible, the device is not ready. I've just tried these discs in another machine and they are working fine. Maybe we have... Ooh, that's an interesting noise. <laughs> it might not be working fine now. I hope you can hear that coming through clearly. Well, I think I've just broke that floppy disk. Let's just try it one more time. Oh, that's nasty. I think it's fair to say the floppy disk drive on here may need some work. It doesn't look to be any marking on the disk surface, but I, since this is just a copy of the Doom Shareware disk, I don't think we'll risk that one. That can go in the bin. Right, a quick voiceover in the edit for this bit because the next bit of footage that I filmed was just me messing about trying to get the CD drive working. The drive is a Freecom IQ series Traveller CD24 uh, and although we're getting activity lights on the drive, couldn't get the drawer to open so I had to use the old paperclip trick to pop the drawer and I could hear activity, I could hear activity from the drive too in that it sounded like I could, it was trying to read a disc. Nothing was showing up on the PC. Now, I can't find the manual for this drive, but it's a bit of a weird one where it has a switch on it that has one selection for PC or the other selection for battery slash DC. So I'm guessing this has got something to do with where it's getting its power from. It has got a battery in it, but of course it's completely worn out after all this time. And I don't have the DC lead either, so maybe it's that it needs that battery or DC power input to work. But I, I would have thought with the switch just in the PC, um, it, you know, just set to PC, that it should be able to draw its power over the PCMCIA card. Either way, it's not working. It needs a bit of further investigation. Right, back to the video. So that leaves me wondering what to do with this laptop. Um... I'm a little bit gutted to be honest, uh, what with the floppy disk drive and the CD drive not working. Um, the CD drive definitely needs further investigation, but I think could be, uh, you know, a replacement could be found uh, without too much trouble. Um, the internal floppy drive, that's going to need a bit more consideration. As I say, the build manuals for this, uh, not build manuals, sorry, the service manuals for this uh, are easily available online, so I'm going to have to have a look at those get that floppy drive out have a good look at it it just it seems a shame not to kind of do something with those and get this working you know i, I really quite like this laptop it's it's kind of chunky it's kind of business-like it despite the fact that it's quite slow particularly in that it's paging to the hard disk a lot even with the maximum amount of ram in perhaps a, oh here we go the screensaver again Perhaps a fresh install of Windows 95 on this uh, would definitely help, might you know, speed it up a little bit. And it's just quite pleasant to use, despite the fact it's constantly paging back and forth. And the hard disk in here isn't particularly fast anyway. Although, mm, just thinking, would an SSD help? Perhaps a little, maybe not that much, given that we're only working with a 100 meg Pentium anyway. I think we're going to have to leave it here for this video for now. We're going to have to maybe see if we can get a sound card, do something about the CD drive, do something about this floppy drive. I do think we need to come back to this some point in the future and try and sort of return the laptop to its former glory because, you know, the machine itself, the, the majority of this, it's it's all working, it's all great. I don't, I don't want to leave it like it is, but we are going to have to temporarily leave it here for now. So on that, I'm just going to say I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please drop me a like or a subscribe, you know, let me know in the comments. I'm going to say thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.